Our Rotarian partners had invited the medical team to come to a very remote area of Ethiopia called Deber Brahan. Deber Brahan has over three million people and they have very little to no health care, even as far as emergencies. So the medical team was invited to come and not only participate with giving this much needed care to these people, but also they wanted help in teaching the doctors in order for them to be able to diagnose and treat a lot of the very common diseases that we treat here that they are not able to, to recognize or treat. There are two things that seem to be the biggest concerns to most people who lack any kind of available health care. One is getting their teeth fixed. The other one is getting glasses. Because of their lifestyle, which is mostly outdoors and far away from the major city, they had lots of injuries. Uh, probably half of the people had some form of injury to their eyes. A person who was just 50 years old could look as though they were 70 or 80, and it was, it was shocking. Uh, the, the wrinkles on their faces, the condition of their eyes, the way they walked, it has to be uh, related to nutrition. Now, 75% of the people in the world need a pair of glasses, and about half of those people, between three and four billion, can't get them. Many people had vision only in one eye because they had had an injury or trauma to the other eye. So when their eyes were already damaged and they couldn't see well out of the other eye, it was lots of hardships and lots of uh, challenges for them, even in their daily life. That lack of glasses is actually the biggest learning disability that exists. And while we were in Ethiopia, one of the things that we did was to examine people's eyes, give them vision checks, and where appropriate, we provided them in some cases with medications to take care of eye infections, and in other cases, we provided them with eyeglasses. We saw very many cataract patients, patients who you could see the cataract in their eye without even using a microscope to look at it, uh, who were in desperate need of surgery. One of the doctors there told me that Ethiopia does not have any kind of insurance and all health care is done on a self-pay basis by the patient. So if you don't have the funds to pay for the service, you don't get your operation to remove your cataract. Um, that was very hard to see. People would wait in line for us all day. Uh, get there early in the morning, get their name registered, and maybe they would be the last patient seen that day. And there was nothing we could really do for them if they had a cataract. On uh, one of our first days at the clinic, a completely blind nun came in who was too old to live in the convent. She had no place to live, we learned. And she cried and cried and we hugged her. When it was time to take her to health care, there was a mob of Ethiopians just outside the door. Some had waited hours. One person had walked six days for help. Part of our medical team was a much needed dental team. Many people came, in fact, some people came as far as from Nigeria with abscesses and there were many people who had between eight and 10 teeth that had to be removed. So there was extreme need, um, nowhere to get relief. And I thought, how are we ever gonna get this blind person through all these people? And to my great surprise, is they would see us coming, whether we were coming towards them or coming to their backs, and they would tell each other to separate, move apart, and the path would be created for us to get through. And as we walked this blind woman through, one of our team members fell, tripped on a rock, and the Ethiopian people caught him and put him back on his feet. Another part of our mission was that we actually fixed all the things we could in the dental department so that they could use the chairs. And we left them over $10,000 worth of supplies to continue in this much needed area of health care.
We went door to door, knocking on doors and asking people if they had children under five that we could give the life-saving polio vaccine. I have to tell you that was very emotional for almost everybody who participated. Uh, the first child that was put in my arms, uh, tears were just running down. We have to imagine that how would we feel if someone knocked on our door and wanted to give some drops to our six-month-old baby. So we had the local Rotarians and volunteers, health workers with us. They explained to the people what we were doing and why we were doing it, and they were very wonderfully receptive. When we first got there, of course, we're all trying to survive at 10,000 feet, and our room was on the fifth floor, and this was a farther hike, trying to breathe. But I was concerned about the people, because what you see on TV is not always pleasant to observe, and it, it worried me. And I was so shocked to find how loving and caring these people were. District 7390 continues to do our part in building a world of peace, goodwill, and understanding. We have a long history of doing that in this district and we continue to do it one grant, one mission, one vocational training team at a time. We are making wonderful partners all over the world who are going to work on their end to continue to better their own lives through our support. Thank you very much for giving to the Rotary Foundation Thank you very much for making all the wonderful projects you saw tonight possible and for supporting all of the grants that go through the Rotary Foundation.